Five other game devs and I did this little mini game jam between us. It's not actually finished yet, but I finished my game for it. And we had either 48 non-consecutive hours or two consecutive weeks to finish a game with weird mechanics. So yeah, in my game, if you yell, then time goes to normal speed. And if you don't yell, then you go into slow motion, which not gonna lie, is a pretty weird mechanic. Oh, and on top of all this, because most of us are really bad artists, we decided to all use the same art kit. I know, very cool. Okay, so to begin, I was responsible for getting the art kit. I was originally gonna find one online, but decided instead to just throw pixel art blobs onto a tile set and call it a day. When that was done, we were allowed to start working. I did the sensible thing and made a Trello board to keep myself organized. After that, I was feeling really creative and original, so I decided to start by making some player movement. You'll notice that the player has a sort of running animation. All I did for this was slice off his legs and then rotate them to make it look like he's walking. Next up, we have to get the volume of the microphone. Unity actually has a built-in microphone class, but all it does is record the microphone into an audio clip. So every fixed update, I loop through the 64 newest samples in the audio clip and then find the peak and that's our microphone volume. If you want the source code for this, the project has a GitHub repo linked in the description. And because I'm such an incredible programmer, this took me very little time to get working. <laughs> Anyway, the program can hear the volume of my claps, so that's nice. Alright, now it's time for the second half of this mechanic. We have the microphone input, but we need a way to convert it to time scale. And originally, I was doing some kind of math on it, but that meant that the time scale would be constantly changing, and that really didn't feel good to play. So now I'm just checking if the microphone volume is above a certain threshold, and if it is, I slap time into normal speed. And obviously, if it's not, the game goes into slow motion. And there's no visual feedback for it now, but you can kind of see that it works. Now that that's finished, we need some weapons. I started by slicing this pole and have to make a little gun sprite. And then I wrote some code that would make the weapon aim towards the mouse. As you can see, it does what it's supposed to, but I ended up reworking it later for a couple reasons. One, it goes through the floor, and that's bad. And two, well, um... Yeah. Anyway, when that was done, I made the gun shoot with physics and stuff. And yeah, that's pretty cool. But you know what's not cool? The fact that you're not subscribed. The game's colors. Th the game looks so ugly right now. So I went over to Low Spec, which is a really great website for pixel art tutorials and color palettes, and found this really awesome one that I'll, of course, link in the description. It slapped all the colors into my game, which makes it look a lot better. Okay, so this game has weapons, movement, and slow motion. But this is all pointless if there's no challenge to the player. Because, well, if there's no challenge, then then they'll stop playing and won't actually get to use any of these mechanics. So once again, I was feeling super original and creative and slapped an enemy into the game. Okay, so it's obvious that the enemy is still not presenting any challenge to the player. So I created another state for my enemy state machine, which by the way, you can check it on the GitHub repo if you want to learn more about how I did it. And I wrote some code and now the enemy follows the player. Um... As I was saying, the enemy follows the player. I also made a state where the enemy will patrol if it can't see the player. Okay, so development was going really smooth until I realized that my project folders were a mess. And I just happened to come across this awesome tutorial by Infallible Code on how to use namespaces in Unity. So I got to work manually slapping every single script into its proper namespace. I was using Visual Studio Code, which is really lightweight, meaning that I had to do everything manually because there's no built-in feature for that. Which brings me to my next point. This video is sponsored by Jeff brains rider just kidding but i did end up trying rider because i've heard lots of good things about it and my goodness this tool is awesome it's literally so integrated with unity and saves me so much time when developing i'm not a fan of the subscription model but it's definitely worth the money even better if you go to school right now you can get the student license for free with the one restriction that you're not allowed to use them commercially but anyway enough simping for jet brains that's for another video when i finished setting up rider i made another state for the state machine which made the enemy shoot and he's still doing cartwheels which i should could probably fix. Okay, so remember when I said that there was no visual feedback for going into slow motion? Well, that changed. I used URP's post-processing and the Unity animator window and got this really cool effect to work. When that was done, I made some animations for the enemy when they got hurt and when they died. And that basically wraps up the core features of the game, which means that it's time for me to start making more enemies, levels, and weapons. And when I say more levels, I mean just levels in general, because we've just got this little platform for now. Anyway, I started with more weapons. I sliced up a bunch of sprites in the tile set and made a shotgun, an automatic gun, and a grenade launcher. I started by programming the shotgun, and for this I made a shooting spread class which would handle bullet spread and all that. 
And like I said earlier, I'm an incredible programmer, so naturally, this messed up the rest of my shooting logic. I tried a few different methods, but eventually got it to work with any number of bullets and whatever measure of spread angle. Basically, I can do this now. Of course, in addition to what I actually needed to create. I also wrote my first custom inspector, which just hides the spread angle variable when the gun only shoots one bullet at a time. I did this because I don't actually use the variable spread angle when the shots is equal to one. Yeah, very cool. Next up is the automatic gun. Because I made such a modular weapon system to begin with, this was really easy. And when that was done, I moved on to the grenade launcher. It has a super slow fire rate, but fires these big and heavy projectiles that explode when they hit something. Sick. Now, remember when I said I was going to rework the weapon aiming system? Well, that time is now. This took me a while to get right, but I started by using physics joints. This worked fine, I guess, except for like the wobbling when you jump because, you know, physics. So instead, I just used the rigid body dot move rotation function and played with the mass of the player and the weapons and got it to work pretty well. Oh, and weapons can be picked up and dropped with the right mouse button now. Awesome. Soon after this was all done, I worked on some smaller things. I made some scene transitions, gave the player health, and made this little death screen that blurs the background and makes text appear. For the text, I just used do tween to tween the scale of the text. And for the blurred background, I didn't write my own shader like most people do. Instead, I tween the weight of a post-processing volume with the depth of field effect attached. The depth of field post-processing effect is normally used in 3D games to simulate our eyes. But after toying around with it, I realized I could just blur the whole screen and render the canvas on top of the camera. Yeah, very cool. To finish up the game, I made four levels, sounds with VFXR, and a really cool song in FL Studio. The only thing left to do was make the music and sound slow down with the time scale. So I made it so that every single audio source would output to the same group in the audio mixer. And then I just set the pitch of that audio mixer group to match the time scale, which gives us this. Sick. And yeah, that's about it. The link to the game is in the description if you want to play it. Unfortunately, there's only a Windows build because I couldn't get Mac or Linux to work. You'll also need a mic to play because otherwise you'll just be stuck in constant slow motion, which isn't that good. If you're interested in seeing the other Jammers games, one of the participants is making a video on his channel when they're all done. So I'll have that linked in the description. And yeah, hit like if you like. Also hit like if you dislike and please subscribe. And please have a great day.